Hello, Professor. Hey, what's going on? How you doing, sir? It's Chris Moore. Uh, I wanted to see before class, and I'm actually driving home, but um, I can see your screen. I, I wanted to see if you can go over how to use the uh, MML, MML uh, as far as doing the tangent line, the graphing. I, I had trouble um, mm -hmm. trying to figure that out, and maybe I'm, I'm, I'm doing something wrong, but I've got everything else done besides that graph. Okay. Oh, I know um, it's homework, so I don't know if you can go over that. Yeah. That's, I mean, you can, guys, you guys can always ask questions over homework. Okay. Let me see. Uh, it's problem so. number nine uh, C, I believe. Okay. Let's see. Screen one. Oh, cute baby. Oh, thank you. <laughs> half, Asian, uh, half Asian? Yep. What, what part? Uh, just Chinese. Oh, okay. Not wrong with that. Yeah. Filipino. Uh, so. Okay, cool. Okay, let's go look at this. Oh, five. I'm sorry. Was it question? Yeah, question five, five I believe. Okay. Um, so for this part, is it going to let me pick points? Yeah. Okay. So there's just, with your lines, they should be tangent to the graph and not intersecting it, right? Oh, is it showing? Let me see. Yeah, I don't see. It. Nothing's popping up. That's weird. Yeah, it's not doing them the other pop-up window. <laughs> Great. Let me see. I wonder if that's under screen share. Hang on one moment. Share. What's it going to do? That. Oh, there there you go. go. There you go. OK. So when you're graphing these lines, they should not be intersecting the graph twice. They should only be at one point. So whenever you're but graphing you... it. Um, yeah. So let's say that I guess the value they gave you was, let me see, x equals negative 2. So at negative 2, you'd have a point, I'm guessing, up here at negative 2, 8. So you would yes, click negative that. 2, 8. You would click that point, And then after you click that point, you would use that slope of negative 2 to find the next point. So you would gotcha. just go, you would just go down to and over one, and your point would be right there. Got you. Okay. Yeah. I that's I guess that's why I need a reminder of that. Yeah. Okay. So that's it. So, so basically, I'm just going down to the next, uh, whether it's it's a positive or negative uh, x. Exactly. Just make sure you have the point correct. And like you said, gotcha. you plugged in negative two. That was four minus. So four plus four, yes. Yeah. So you'd have a point at negative two eight, which is there. Yeah, and then for your slope, just down two and over one, and it should put the point there for you. Nine, so two eight, nine eight, one two, yeah. And it'll plot that point for you. That's all you have to do for all the other points. Gotcha. So, um, so as far as uh, once you get your vertex. You can use the first because it gives you three points to get. You use your first mm -hmm. point to figure out the what do you call it, the parabola or? Uh, yeah, so you do the uh, vertex, and then you can pick. Uh, I mean, then you can find an, just an x-intercept or anything just to pick another point. So, for this one, I guess our vertex was let's just plot the vertex uh, of your. Parabola. It was negative one. It was one negative one. It was one negative one. So, one negative one. So right there, right. Something yeah, like and then, yeah, I had two eight, and then if I plugged in zero, I'd get that function, right? So after that, after you graph your parabola, then you just plot your points. So then, okay. at negative when I did the when I did mm -hmm. the x-intercept, I was coming up with uh, I was coming up with uh, what did I? I guess I was coming up with negative. I was coming up with negative two zero. So if you did your x-intercept, you would have zero and positive two. So it's okay. probably just okay. a, sign, a sign mistake or something like that. Zero and positive two. Yeah. Yeah, maybe. And and that's just with the uh, the x squared uh, minus 2x. Mm -hmm. okay. okay. Yeah. One, two, one. Gotcha. One, two, one. 
Yeah, because remember, if it's tangent, it shouldn't be intersecting the actual parabola. It should only be touching one point and take off. Gotcha. Okay, well, I appreciate that. All right, yes, sir. Um, I think I get I'll it now. So as long as, uh, so since it's a negative two is my X, I go down two and then cross over one. Sorry, uh, um, no, uh, sorry. X is negative two, but your slope was negative six. Gotcha. See that? So for B, it says the slope of the tangent line at X equals negative two is negative six. So again, plot the point, but instead of going down two, you're gonna go down six, cause that's your slope. So I would go one, two, three, four, five, six, and there would be my next point. Gotcha. So it'll okay. look like that. And then for the next one at zero, you'd have a slope of negative two. So if you plugged in zero, you'd get zero. So for this one, I'd put the point at zero, zero, and then I would use that slope of negative two down two over one. There'd be my next line. And then for the last one, x equals three. So one, two, three. If you plug three in, you'd get it was three, three. Minus six. I think it was so three, get, negative three. So you get, well, three positive. Well, yeah, three, three, right? So there'd be one point. And then if the slope is four, then I would three, go three, up yeah, four. Right. I would go up four and over one. So one, right. two, three, four, and then over one. And there it is. That should what gotcha. that's what it should look like. There you go. That's that as sense. easy as that's as easy as you can do it there. <laughs> gotcha. Yeah. Okay. All right. I appreciate it. Yes, sir. Sounds good. Okay. that there's that there's that okay any other questions before we begin y'all uh, robert i sent i sent you a uh, message yes i got it gotcha man thank you all right boys there we go <laughs> yeah. all right so we are doing 9.5 today oh we are oh for one doesn't really matter. There we go. So I will post those notes in the chat for you to download and follow along with. 9.5. There you go. There you go. Okay. So 9.5. 9.4 was a struggle. Oh, it was the long way. It was a lot of algebra. It was just a lot of stuff. Today is a rewarding day because now we get to learn the shortcut to the derivative. Yeehaw. Okay. So with that being said, we get into differenti differentiation properties and we are going to be finding the derivative again, but faster. So theorem one says the constant function rule. This says if y equals some constant c, then the derivative of the constant, the derivative of the constant is going to be zero. So here are your derivative notations. Remember that f prime of x means zero. Now you have a new notation, y prime, that also means the derivative will be zero. And dy over dx also means the derivative. But the way you pronounce this one is you say the derivative of uh, the derivative of y with respect to x. That's what we say. So if you ever see that notation, all you have to worry about is that yeah, all that says is take the derivative. That's it. So again, for theorem number one, if you are given a constant, and remember what a constant is. A constant is a number without a variable. Where's my face? There I am. Okay, cool. So a derivative, I mean, a constant is a number without a variable. So the derivative of any constant is zero, which brings us to the examples below. Look at A. This says if f of x is three, then what is the derivative of three going to be? Zero. 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 That's it, because three is a constant. Same thing with B. If y equals five, negative five, what is the derivative of negative five? Zero. 
zero. Oh, that's so easy, right? Only with constants. Only with constants. If it was f of x equaled 100, what would the derivative of that be still? Zero. Zero. As long as it's Can just you show a us an example of number. where it, it will not be zero? Yeah, that's coming up next. OK, sorry. Right? Oh, and also, like I said, I like to draw a little picture of what you just found. So remember that derivative means slope, right? So let's go ahead and look at this function. f of x equals 3, which is the same as y equals 3 which is the graph of what type of line? Horizontal or vertical? Ver, uh, horizontal. Horizontal. So this is what y equals three would look like. And what is the slope of all horizontal lines? Zero. Zero, oh my goodness. See, and that's why derivative, <laughs> that's why derivative just means slope because all you're doing is finding the slope of that function. So when you're given y equals three and you find out that the derivative is zero, you're actually saying that, hey, the slope of this line y equals three is zero. That's why derivative is just a fancy word for slope. Does that make sense? Yes, sir. All right, good. Quick question. Yes. And I'm so sorry to interrupt you. You are recording this one, right? Yes, they're all on automatic okay. record now. Awesome. Just making sure. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. All right. So that was the constant rule for derivatives. Next, we get into the power rule for derivatives. So this says, if you're given a function f of x equals x to the nth power, where n is any real number, then the derivative of x to the n is given by n times x n to times the n x. minus one. So what that means is all you do is you take the power of n, you bring it to the front, and you subtract one from the original exponent that was there, which of course, I'll give you an example down below. So let's get started on these derivatives using the power rule. The power rule is your new best friend. So for the first one, let me go back down to that size. Here we want the derivative of x to the fifth. So when I take the derivative, I say f prime of x. And all we're going to do is bring this power to the front, which means I'm going to get 5x. And then what you're going to do next is subtract 1 from the original exponent. So my derivative is going to be 5x to the fourth. Look how fast that was, guys. That's it? That's it. Now imagine if we were doing this the way we learned on Tuesday. You would have, using that x plus h method, you would have x plus h to the fifth, and you would have to distribute that five times. <laughs> until you finally got to here an hour later. Kind of like logs. There you go. Almost like logs, almost. These are derivatives though, but I get what you're saying when you bring the power down. That's it guys. Not bad, right? So let's try it again. Y equals X to the 30th. And I'm gonna say, the derivative of Y, which we write as y prime. So what is the derivative of x to the 30th going to be? Well, it's going to be 30x to the 29. That's oh. it. Done. Calculus is way too easy now, right? I don't know. Something <laughs> feels like it's going to get worse. Well, I mean, you're going to see algebra, a bunch of algebra is still involved. But for now, it's pretty easy, right? Now imagine this one going the old way. Imagine having x plus h to the 30th. That'd make anybody cry. Imagine foiling that out 30 times. <laughs> All right, perfect. 
Okay, now, same thing here, just be careful. So here, let me make sure all my, there we go. We're gonna get the derivative of y, which we're gonna say y prime. And now we want the derivative of t to the negative third. So the same thing applies here, that negative three comes down and you subtract one from the exponent that was there. So what's my derivative? Negative four. Good. Negative three t to the negative four. Everybody good with that? Yes. Okay. So this is one way to write your answer. My math lab may be picky and take another way, which brings in our algebraic knowledge. So what do you guys know about negative exponents? What's another way to rewrite a negative exponent? Over the exponent? What's that? One over the exponent? One over the exponent. That's close enough, right? So remember this property. If you're ever given x to the negative n, you can rewrite it as one over x to the positive n. That's what you meant, right? Yes. So our other possible answer we can have is going to be negative 3 over t to the fourth. So this one's good, but it could also be this one. Just know that they are equivalent. And I don't know which one my math lab's going to ask for. Just know that they both mean the same, and you can rewrite them either way. All good? All right. Next, d over dx of x to the 5 thirds. What this notation says, make sure that's good. All this says is, hey, take the derivative with respect to x. So this just says flat out, take the derivative of x. That's what this notation says. So we do it again. And what number's coming down? Um, five five, five thirds. thirds, good. Five thirds times X, and now you have to subtract one from the original exponent. So what is five thirds minus one? Now I'll even write it here. Two Cause thirds. Good, because if you did five thirds minus one, you'd have to change one into a fraction of three over three, <clears throat> and you'd get two thirds. So this would become five thirds X to the two thirds. Good with that? Wait, so one more time, when you do five over three minus one, mm -hmm. it's gonna be five over three minus three over three? Yep, because if you're going to subtract those two fractions, what's your common denominator? Three. Three. Okay. Got it? I'll even do this. I can even put this. Multiply that by three over three, right? Okay. Excellent. See? You see how fast derivatives are? It's crazy. Okay. Okay. <clears throat> which means we come to E. F of X equals one over X to the fourth. We cannot take the derivative in this form. We have to rewrite it algebraically before we do so. So we are gonna use that negative exponent law I showed you about two minutes ago to rewrite this. So what is another way to rewrite one over X to the fourth? X to the negative fourth? X to the negative four. And remember, we haven't done any calculus yet. We've only rewritten it algebraically. We've put it in its proper form of x to the nth power, which means now we can take the derivative. So I'll say f prime of x. And what is the derivative of x to the negative 4 going to be? Negative 3. Well, what number is coming down? Maybe negative four X over negative, I mean, uh, to the negative three power. Careful, you're subtracting one, which means you're going more 
Negative. Oh, oh, shoot. Sorry. Negative five. <laughs> there you go. So you get negative five. So once again, this is a good answer. But if my math lab wants you to rewrite it as a fraction, what's another way to rewrite this? Negative four over x to the fifth. There you go. I'll just say or. OK, everybody good with that? All right, next, we might have to introduce some more algebraic properties to take the derivative of the square root of u. So once again, we can't take the derivative in this form. So what is another way to rewrite this radical? One over u to the second? Get in there. It's gonna be u to a certain power. So if you don't remember the properties, once again, the power of two. Okay. What was that? The power of two? No, that would be u squared. So remember square root oh, yeah, yeah. and square uh, are not the same thing, right? Yeah. So if you are ever given, I'm just going to say the nth root of x, another way to rewrite the nth root of x exponentially is by rewriting as x to the one over n. Which means since this is a square root, what number is there that we never put? Two. A two, which means if I wanna rewrite this from radical to yeah, exponential, it's u to the what power? One half. There you go. And remember, we haven't done any calculus yet. This is pure algebra, which means we are now ready for some calculus. Because now we're ready to take the derivative. So we're going to say y prime, which represents the derivative of y, equal to, now we are taking the derivative of u to the 1 half. What number is coming down? 1 half. One half, u, and you're going to subtract one from the power that was there. So one half minus one gives me negative one half. Negative one half. Yeehaw. You could say 50 cents minus a dollar gives you negative 50 cents, right? And again, this answer is perfect as it is. But if you're asked to rewrite it, how would you rewrite this one? One half u, oh no, one half over u and half? One over u to the half power. <laughs> okay, cool. So that one half in front is throwing us off, right? So what I'm going to do is just write it out front. And let's just focus on this, which I heard the right answer. This would be considered one over u to the positive one half because we use that negative exponent rule, right? And if you put it together, you get one over two u to the one half. There you go. You could even, but I don't think it's going to ask you to do it. You could even rewrite the denominator as two square root u. Oh, pure. So many algebraic properties, right? The only calculus here was the very first part. The rest is the beginning and the rest was algebraic, right? This was the only calculus we did. One half u to the negative one half. Soak it in, right? Okay. Any questions on those ones? <clears throat> All 
All right. <clears throat> Let's do it again. G, D over DX of one over the square root of X. Okay, this says take the derivative of this expression, but again, we can't take the derivative in this form. So we have to do a couple of rewrites. And from the above, what is another way to rewrite the square root of X? X one half to the or one half. half. Good, X to the one half. And then we still can't take the derivative in this form. So we have to apply the negative exponent rule. I put that in parentheses, D over DX of that which leads me into d over dx of x to the negative one half. We have successfully rewritten it, and now we're ready for the calculus. Take the derivative now. And what number is coming down? Negative one half. Negative one half x. And then you have to subtract one from that negative one half. Three over two, negative three over two. Good, because negative one half minus one becomes one over one. You get a common denominator of two over two, which gives you negative one half minus two over two, which gives me negative three halves. So that would be one half, negative one half X to the negative three halves. And once again, a perfect answer. But if you had to rewrite it, how would you rewrite this one? One over what? Negative three over two. Now remember, so the exponent's negative already. So if we use the negative exponent rule, we flip it to the denominator and the exponent becomes positive. Positive. We're just missing a number that's in front. One over two X to the three halves. There you go. One over two X to the positive three halves. Oof, there you go. Okay. Any questions on those three before moving on? So you'd have to fix them algebraically before you take the actual derivative. But we see how this process is a lot faster than the old school way that we learned on Tuesday. Thank goodness. Okay. <clears throat> Constant multiple property, all this says is that if there is a coefficient in front, then, or the, if there is a coefficient in front of your function, all this says is take the derivative of the function and then multiply the coefficient in later. That's all this says. So to give you an example of that, we can start with a, f of x equals 3x squared, and all this says by the constant multiple property is ignore the three for now and just give me the derivative of X squared. So when I rewrite this, I say F prime of X equal to three times. And what's the derivative of X squared gonna be? What numbers Two coming X down? X to the first power. 2x to the first power, good. And now by the constant multiple, prop constant multiple property, all this says is multiply this three back in and we get our final answer of just... 6x. That's it. Mm, okay. But what's to stop us from saying that, why not just bring this two down and multiply the three? you'd be done already. Think about it. So you can split them up as you need to, but you can also just bring that exponent down, multiply the number in front, 
and skip a step. All right, let's try it again. Now this one, yes, we want to take out the constant because it's a fraction and it already looks a little difficult. So using the constant multiple property, this is t cubed over six. What fraction could I take out? One fifth. Good. I can rewrite this as one six times t cubed. So t cubed over six and one six times t cubed mean the same exact thing which means now we're ready for the derivative because all we want is the derivative of this function, t cubed. So I'll say y prime equal to one sixth times, and what is the derivative of t cubed going to be? Three t to the second power. That's it, three t squared. And now multiply the one sixth back in and you would get three over six t squared, but three over six becomes two. other way. Six over three would be two. Three over six is one third. We're getting there. <laughs> What's half of six? Half. It's a half, right? One half t squared. <laughs> There we go. All right, so that's all the constant multiple rule says is, hey, if there's a number in front, just move it to the side, take the deriv derivative of the function and then multiply that constant or coefficient back in. Okay. Ooh, good. Now we want to rearrange this one using that property. All right, once again, this is kind of like the one above it. What fraction would you take out? One four. Not one one four is the power, one half. I would take out one half, and this would leave me with one over x to the fourth. Because one half times one over x to the fourth is the same as the original problem. But now we want the derivative of the function on the inside. So we have to rewrite this one by the negative exponent property. So my final rewrite should be one half times what? Four x. Well, not derivative yet, because we're still rewriting. X so to the negative four. There you go. X to the negative four. Now we're ready for the derivative. Oh, crazy, right? So now we can take the derivative. And that one half stays out front. And what is the derivative of x to the negative four? Negative three x. Negative three x minus five. Uh, negative, x four. To negative four. four. <laughs> negative four x to the negative fourth. Fifth, fifth. fifth. <laughs> Crap. <laughs> oh, these negatives, man. Messing with our minds, right? So remember that negative four will come down and then you have to subtract one. And remember, if you're negative and you subtract, you're going more negative. So we get that negative four X to the negative five. Now multiply that one half in and what do we get? One over, or no. What is one half of four, guys? Two. <laughs> negative two. Negative, negative two. two. X to the <laughs> negative fifth. <laughs> <laughs> if you're thinking too hard, stop it. These are way too easy to overthink. <laughs> okay. And like I said, this is a great answer, but if you have to rewrite it, 
What's another way to rewrite it? That one would be one over two X. So fifth. this time the two is not a fraction. So the two would stay in the numerator. Okay, so negative two over X to the fifth. That's it. Mind blowing guys. <laughs> there you go. You got more? Not yet. All right. Any questions on that page? What hours are you tutoring again? <laughs> <laughs> every day. Uh well, not every day. <clears throat> Monday through Thursday, it's one to three. All right. I'm gonna have to go in one of these days. And then tomorrow it's ten to one. Okay, thanks. If I'm not there, just shoot me an email. Okay. All right. And now, theorem four, the sum and difference properties. So if you are given two functions, u of x plus or minus v of x, then the derivative can be applied over multiple terms, as you see there. So again, the functions u of x plus or minus v of x. If you take the derivative, you get u prime of x plus or minus v prime of x. So again, if you're given five terms, you can take the derivative of all five terms. So no matter how many terms you have, you can still take the derivative of all of them. So that's what we're gonna do down below. So we'll start with a, f of x, equals 3x squared plus 2x. So what we want to do here is we'll use that constant property from the last page. And I'll just put a put brackets around our actual x functions. So when we take the derivative, this 3 will stay out front. And we start with what is the derivative of x squared? That would be 2x to the first. Good. Plus, and now we start with the second one. That 2 would stay out front. And now we want the derivative of x. Ooh, this one's tricky. Anybody know what the derivative of x is? That should be one. one X to zero. Hey, that's good enough for me. You would get one X to the zero with power. Well, what is anything to the zero with power? And if you say zero, you log off of zoom right now. <laughs> You're like, oh, everybody's like, I guess I got to log off, huh? I guess so. <laughs> Anything to the zeroth power is what number? Isn't it one? One. One. That's it. It's one. So the derivative of x just happens to be one. And let's, let's just touch on that real fast. So if I said d over dx of x, well, that is x to the first. So if you took the derivative, that one would come down and you'd get x to the one minus one, which we have one times x to the zero with. And just like we said, anything to the zero with power is one. So the derivative of x is just one. That's it. So it'd be one x to the power so, of one. So one x to the zero, with, which is just one. Oh, so, okay, so we just take it all off and just put one. That's it, just one. Because, and I'll do another note here. Remember that anything to the zeroth power is always one. And one times one is one. Okay, which means if we clean this up, I'll get 6x plus 2. That's it. Because once again, this is one. Or maybe I should write that out, right? You'd get one, which gives us 
six x plus two. There we go. That's better. Okay. So the derivative of a variable, just a single variable to the first power is always going to be one. So if I were to write, if I were to write D over DT of T, what would that derivative be? One. One. If I were to write D over DW of W, what would the derivative of W one. be? One. So if you're ever just given a single variable and you're told to take the derivative of it, it's always one, no matter what. Make sense? Okay, let's keep going. All right. So B, <clears throat> Y equals four plus two X cubed minus three X to the negative one. So this is in the perfect form. We don't have to rewrite anything. We're ready for the derivative. So I'll just separate the functions for now. There we go. There's, and now we're ready for the derivative. I say y prime. And what is the derivative of 4? 0. 0. Good, because 4 is a? Constant. 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 There you go. Plus 2 times, what is the derivative of x cubed? 3x to the squared. Good. 3x squared, 3x to the second, however you want to say it, minus 3 times, and what is the derivative of x to the negative 1? Positive 1. Well, it will become positive soon, but just take the normal derivative. Yeah. Okay. Negative, so just negative 1. Negative 1x to the negative 2. 2. There you go. Calculus is done. Now, let's clean it up. Everybody good with this? Get y prime, and we can ignore the, we can just get rid of the zero now, and we're gonna get six x squared, and now your negative three times your negative x becomes positive, positive three x to the negative two. Now, I don't think it's going to make you rewrite this. But if you had to, it would just be 6x squared plus 3 over x squared. OK, cool. We're moving. All right. Now. We get y equals the cube root of w minus 3w. And we can't take the derivative yet because of that cube root of w. So we're going to have to bring back that radical exponent rule that we saw about five minutes ago. And what is another way to rewrite the cube root of w? Third. Good. W to the one there. Minus three W. There we go. And now we are ready for the derivative. All right. So we're going to say Y prime is equal to, and let's start. What is the derivative of W to the one third? What number's coming down? Was that a one third? Did I hear that? Yeah, one third. Okay. <laughs> one third W, and you have to subtract one. So one third minus one is what? 
Negative two thirds. Good. Negative two thirds. So one third minus one becomes one over one, which you multiply by three over three. And then one third minus three thirds becomes negative two thirds. Okay. And then minus, what is the derivative of 3w, guys? Or I guess I should say, what is just the derivative of w? Wouldn't it just be 3? That's it. It's just 3. Because the derivative of w is 1. W zero, yeah, one zero W. You just yeah. So any single variable without a power other than one, the derivative is always one, no matter what. Whoop. Oh no. Oh gosh. Okay, there we go. Okay. All right. So look at this guy, lots of rewriting to do. This says d over dx or take the derivative of x of five over three x squared minus two over x to the fourth plus x cubed over nine. So time to rewrite a bunch of stuff. So the d over dx will stay out front. And I'm just going to change this to brackets because brackets are neater. And let's start with the first term. What number, what fraction do I take out of the first term? Five thirds. Five thirds. And that would leave me with five thirds times one over x squared, which we'll fix in a moment. Let's get through all the terms. Minus, now let's start with this next term, what number could I take from this fraction? Two. Two. And you'd get two times one over x to the fourth. And then, is that a plus? That is a plus. Let's do the last one, x cubed over nine. What fraction could I take from there? One over nine. One over nine. And that leaves me with x cubed, close bracket. We're almost there, guys. No calculus has been done yet. Strictly algebraic so far. Now we get to rewrite these two fractions in order to take the derivative. So if I rewrite this one more time, d over dx of 5 thirds times, what is the derivative, not, sorry, we're not taking the derivative. How do you rewrite one over x squared? To the negative two. X to the negative two. Minus two times one over x to the fourth becomes x to the? Negative four. Negative four. Plus one ninth times x cubed. Look at that. Everything has been rewritten algebraically and puts it into the perfect form for us to take the derivative. Now we do some calculus. So we'll start with the first term. That 5 thirds stays out there. And what is the do now? What is the derivative of x to the negative 2? Negative 2x to the... To the negative third. There yeah. we go. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Minus 2 times what's our derivative of x to the negative fourth? Negative 4x. Oh, negative 4x to the negative... Fifth. Half. Fifth. There we go. The fifth. Ew, that's ugly. Oh. Negative 4x to the negative fifth plus 1 ninth. And what is the derivative of x cubed? 3x 
to the negative. I mean, just the two. Yeah. There you. There you go. There you go. Look at that. Calculus is done. Now we're back to algebra because we have to clean everything back up. <laughs> so, we what is the x? What was that? Do we just plug them into the x now? Yeah. So these numbers. Well, you don't plug anything to x. These coefficients multiply those coefficients. Yeah. So what's five thirds times negative two? Negative ten thirds. There you go. Negative ten thirds x to the negative three. And then negative two times negative four. Eight. Positive eight x to the negative fifth. Plus, what is one nine times three? Or basically, I'm saying one nine times three is three ninths. And what is three ninths reduced to? One third. One third. That's it, y'all. No need to rewrite that monster. Oh, boy. So out of all these examples so far, what do you think is killer? The calculus or the algebra? Neither, because they're that good. <laughs> oh, good. Well, not because I'm good. How about y'all? <laughs> Definitely be watching. There you go. So remember, calculus is heavily algebra-based. So you have to know these algebraic properties in order to move on and simplify. Okay, perfect. All right, so we went through all the derivative rules so far for this lesson. Now we get to apply them to these functions. So example five, rewrite before differentiating and find the derivative of one plus x squared over x to the fourth. Okay, well, once again, we don't know how to take the derivative of this function in this form yet. So in order to take the derivative using the only rules we know, we have to rewrite this algebraically. So looking at this function, how many terms are in your numerator? Two. Two. Are they over the same denominator? Yes. Yes, which means how many fractions can I split this one fraction into? Two. Two. I can rewrite this as one over x to the fourth plus x squared over x to the fourth. And now I'm going to simplify. First off, how can you rewrite 1 over x to the fourth? x to the negative 4. x to the negative 4. Plus, now, on x squared over x to the fourth, what's going to cancel? Negative 2 or x to the negative? You'll get x to the negative 2 because this x squared will cancel to a 1, and this 4 will become a 2. So this becomes 1 over x squared, which you said to rewrite as x to the negative 2. Everybody good with that? Yes. <laughs> yeah. Have we done any calculus yet? Not yet. No, no. Not yet. <laughs> not yet, <laughs> unfortunately. But we are ready to do some calculus because now we put this into a form that we need. And now we get to use our best friend, the power rule. So we say f prime of x. And what is the derivative of x to the negative 4? Negative 3x to the negative 5th. Uh, you're off. By <laughs> negative 4x to the negative 5th. Oh, my, my bad. There you go. There you go. <laughs> And then, what's the derivative of x to the negative 2? Negative 2x to the negative 3. That's it. Done, done, done. 
All that for a dumb clout. <laughs> Algebra, 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 y'all. Okay. There's that. And let's try it again on the next one. I'll leave you alone for like two minutes to try this one out. It's going to be the same concept as this one above. I'll start you off with a hint. How many terms are in your numerator on this example? One. I mean, a three. Three. Three, which means how many fractions can you split it into? Three. Three. Two. There you go. Go from there. So uh, we have time. I could give you guys about three minutes on this. I'll jump in at 625. Go ahead and try this one out on your own. All right, there we go. So you split into three fractions, five over X, three X over X, four X squared over X, reduce and rewrite. So five over X becomes five X to the negative one, three X over X becomes three, and four X squared over X becomes four X, which means you are now in the perfect form to take the derivative. We take the derivative and the derivative of five X to the negative one, is negative 5x to negative 2. The derivative of 3 is 0. And the derivative of 4 is of 4x is 4. Any questions on that one? Yes. Um, on the 3x over x, did it just uh, become the 3 because you take away the top x and the bottom x? Exactly. Those cancel, right? OK, so then when the x to the second power over mm -hmm. x, you're taking away just one x. And that's exactly. why you're going to be exactly gone and gone. Right. OK, that's where I was kind of confused. Cool. I always said if like you want to understand it more, like let's just say I had like x to the fourth over x to the fifth. Right. And if you want to understand canceling, 
without knowing some rules, well, here's what you can do for fun. X to the fourth means X times X times X times X. X to the fifth means X times X times X times X times X. And then you just have yourself a good old time saying, cancel, 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 cancel. Wait, why did it become negative five X? Because the negative one came down. Could you show us that? Yeah. So for 5x to the negative 1, we're only worried about the derivative of x to the negative 1, right? Oh, yeah. So what's the derivative of x to the negative 1? That'd be negative 1x to 0. I mean, to, yeah. Sorry, negative 2. And then, boom. That makes sense? Yeah. Hold on, wait, I'm gonna write that down. Yeah, Let me down I'll leave it there. Good. I won't erase it. What other questions on that one? How did the negative three become zero? Because, because three is a, is a constant. 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 And what is the derivative of any constant? Zero. zero. So zero. we just drop it? That's it, yep. And the x on the four got removed because the derivative of four x is four. That's it. <laughs> there we go. There we go. All right. Sounds good. Okay. Any other questions on this one? Is that the last one? Yeah, we made it to the end. Last one, guys. Word problem involving derivatives. So the total sales of a company in millions of dollars T months from now are given by the function S of T equals 0 0.05 T cubed plus 0 0.2 T squared plus 4 T plus 6. Step A, find the derivative. So let's go ahead and do that first. All right, <clears throat> so A, it wants to know what is S prime of T? So I'm just gonna rewrite this original function first, 0 0.05 T cubed plus 0 0.2 T squared plus 4T plus six. And now, Let's go ahead and take the derivative because it's in the proper form. So when we take the derivative, again, you can use the multiple property. Just look at the functions for now. So I'll leave 0 0.05 here. And what is the derivative of t cubed? 3t squared. 3t squared plus point two times what is the derivative of t squared two t two t what is the derivative of four t two four just four because the derivative of t is one. And what is the derivative of six? Plus zero. 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 Yeehaw. Everybody good with that? And now it's cleanup time. 0 0.05 times three. I have five cents and I tripled it. How much change do I have now? 15. <laughs> 15. 15 cents t squared plus 0. 0.2 times t. I have 20 cents and I just doubled it. How much money do I have? 40 cents. There you or go. 0. 0.4 t plus 4. There's our derivative.
No calculator needed yet, right? <laughs> okay, so we found our derivative. Now B says find S of two and S prime of two. Oh boy. So for B, it wants to take two and plug it into the original function. And then it wants to take two and plug it into the derivative. So calculator time. So we're just plugging into two, right? That's it, to the original function and into the derivative, nothing else. So for B, it wants S of two and S prime of two. So I'll go to my lovely Desmos calculator. Whoops, no, nope, keep that there. Uh, I'll drag you here. You come here, boom, boom, boom. And let me zoom out a bit over here. Any day now, computer. So this is where we get the revenue, plugging into two and then the, the prime of two using that. It's uh, it's kind of like the last example we did last class, right? Gotcha. Yeah. Okay. So S of two, I'm using the original function, 0 0.05 times two squared plus 0 0.2 times two squared plus four times two plus six. And we get 15 for the first one. And then I do the derivative 0 0.15 times two squared, not squared, yeah, squared, yeah. Oh no, did I mess that up? Because the first one should be cubed, right? Yeah, that's what I was gonna ask you. Yeah, whoops, good catch. All right, start over. <laughs> or what did you guys get? I'll believe you. I got 15.20. Yeah, I got 15.2 as well. For the first answer? Yes. Yes. Okay, cool. I'm trusting you. <laughs> Good. And now I'll plug it into the second one. Two squared plus 0 0.4, two plus four. And the last one, you get 5.4. Everybody good with that? We're trusting you. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> now you're trusting me. I typed that one in. I typed that one correctly. Yeah. The I first one, not so much. Can we double check the first one? I. That's why I said I trusted you guys. <laughs> but you can double check it if you want. No, yeah. I, never mind. I think it's it ridiculous. was fifteen point. You could check. <laughs> All right, let me <laughs> let me check. Oh my goodness, that's gonna be cubed plus zero point two times two squared plus four times two plus six. Fifteen point two. You guys got lucky. <laughs> All right, <laughs> there you go. Step C. We're going to do the same exact thing, but this time we're going to plug in 13. And yeah, to both the original and the derivative. And this time we're just going to interpret what it means. So S of 13 and S prime of 13. There we go. So plug away again, 0 0.5 times 13 cubed plus 0 0.2 times 13 squared plus four times 13 plus six. All right, I get 201.65 for that. And then into the derivative, 0 0.15 times 13 squared plus 0 0.4 times 13 plus four. And I get 34.55.
you guys get those numbers yet? Yes. Perfect. All right, back to this screen. Oh, man. Okay. And now all this says is interpret what these mean. So for the first interpretation, S of 13. So this means add in 13 months, we are going to make $201 million. So remember, T is the amount of months and S is the sales in millions. So after 13 months, I guess I could write that down, right? After 13 months, Sales are 201.65 million. Now we need to interpret the next one, the derivative. So this says after 13 months, we get 34.55. So <clears throat> remember what the derivative means. Derivative means slope. So Whoa. is this a positive number or a negative number? Positive. 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 So this means at 13 months, our money is what? Going up 34 million. 34 every million year. every month. Every month. Right? So this says, I'll just say at 13 months, sales increase by 34.55 million. And that's it, y'all. Those are the shortcut derivatives full of all the algebra fun you can handle. Any questions? No.